Uh, look, one night I was going home from here and I was listening to some songs on YouTube and I just happened to stumble across this song and, and touch it. You know, and, and the word tells us that I haven't seen or heard or even entered into a heart. Uh, man, what God has in store for us. You know, and entering into the heart of man, I tell you, man, that we just can't comprehend it. You know, right. we, we can't under we, we don't have the faculty to understand. You know, and, and what it's gonna be like at that marriage of the land. You know, praising him and blessing him for all he's done for us. But this song is, is simply called the Revelation Song. <laughs> Worthy is a man who was slain, holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on.
This is what I'm here for. Uh, Link really, really perked up. He read this from the Isaiah scroll that was a prophecy about Messiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He wants me to preach to those who ain't getting it right now. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Has anybody in the house ever been the recipient of that Jesus? Amen. Amen. Have you ever healed a broken heart in this room? Isn't that amazing? To proclaim liberty, and that's the part I want to really focus on, to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty, to free people, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Paul talked about freedom in a very clear way in Galatians 5.1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Listen. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Once they let the big dog go, you don't let them tie you up no more. You hear me? I hope you all get that. If you don't get nothing else tonight, I hope you'll get that. That Christ has made you free. Don't let people put you in bondage with rules and legalism and all that kind of stuff. And then our, our, our title, Who Let the Calf Out, comes from Malachi 4.2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness, a reference to Jesus, arise with healing in his wings, and shall go forth and grow up as calves out of a stall. I love that imagery. I, I, you know, I don't know a lot about cowboys and cows and all that, but I've seen that a few times. That's a pretty cool thing when a calf breaks out of a stall. Well, here's what we've got tonight. Jesus boldly announces that he has come to set people free. That's what he's all about. The Pharisees are there. They're there to challenge him. They're like, uh, you know, well, when have we ever been slaves? And I thought, well, maybe in Egypt, maybe in Babylon, maybe in Persia, maybe in Mede, maybe by the Seleucids, maybe by the Ptolemies, maybe by the Greeks, Persians, maybe by the Romans. Uh, you know, who they were basically serving at the time that they were talking. It's ridiculous. And uh, so anyway, they, you know, what makes you think that we need to be free? Well, he's talking to them about their spiritual freedom. And he was, in fact, at war with them over this fact because in the midst of his liberation, they're insisting on keeping men in spiritual bondage. I really do think that was a big deal as to why he threw such fit when he cleared the temple. They're trying to put men in bondage. They're trying to manipulate people. They're trying to say, you got to go through us to get to God. I'm going to tell you what, we don't have to go through anybody but Jesus to get to God. So the big idea tonight at Cowboy Church is freedom. It's freedom. We're going to talk about freedom. And very briefly, top five lessons about freedom. Number one, the most important, it's Jesus who sets us free. It is absolutely Jesus who sets us free. When he came and he preached in his hometown of Nazareth, they despised it, they rejected it, they wanted to throw him off the cliff. But he said, here's what I'm here to do. I'm here to fulfill the role and the mission of Messiah. And one of the things that Messiah is going to do is to preach the gospel to those who are not getting it now, to set the captives free, to preach to those who are oppressed, to heal the brokenhearted. That's the ministry that Jesus does. He wants to set people free. I want you to know tonight that we don't have to be a slave to sin. We don't have to be a slave Amen. to things in our life. We don't have to be a slave to addiction. You don't have to be a slave to alcohol. You don't have to be a slave to drugs. You don't have to be a slave to any kind of evil or immoral thought. You don't have to be a slave to lust. You don't have to be a slave to internet porn. You don't have to be a slave to pride or injustice or prejudice or greed or lust or anything else because you are a child of God. He can set you free. You don't have to be in bondage to anything because Jesus can set you free. He says here, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Now, the whole the time since that's been said for 2,000 years, the world's been trying to steal that one. They like that little phrase, oh, you shall know the truth. But what they're talking about is the truth of this world. You know, if you know psychology, it'll set you free. If you know sociology, it'll set you free. If you learn enough at school, it'll set you free. If you, know, if you learn politics, it'll... Let me tell you something. 
The truth that sets people free is not a body of knowledge. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth. Amen. And whoever, comes, whoever wants to come to me, that's where it's at. He's the truth and the only truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through Him. If you want to know what the truth is, the truth is Jesus. Amen. He came to reveal grace, glory, and truth. And when we know Him, we can be set free. Romans 5, 6, 7, and 8, four consecutive chapters. I don't even have time to even hardly mention it, but in chapter 5, we are freed from the wrath of God. We are no longer under the wrath of God as a result of being Christians, believers in Jesus. In chapter 6, he talks about how we can be free from the power of sin. You know, people, I, I know we're all sinners, and we all fall short, and we come short all the time. But the fact is, is that we do not have to be a slave to sin. We do not have to let sin rule in our everyday lives. He gives us power. We can have the power to overcome sin in our daily life. We'll never be perfect, but we should never be controlled by sin. Romans 7, he said, you can be free from the bondage of the law, from the legalism of the law. In Romans 8, even free from the curse of death itself. You don't have to be a slave to death. You don't have to live out your life in fear and desperation because it's all coming to an end one day. You can live in the hope and the knowledge and the truth and the grace and the joy that when this life ends, you're going to start a new life, a real life that's going to be with Him in heaven. We are free from these things. We can be free from legalism. You know, I, I spend my days, I, I do a lot of preaching about legalism, a lot of preaching about religion. Uh, I'm just not a big fan. I'm just not. Religion is often man's pursuit. Uh, you know, how, how are we going to climb the mountain to attain God? Well, you ain't going to climb no mountain to attain God. And He's already climbed the mountain to come rescue you. Amen. The fact is, is religion is empty, and we don't need religion, we need a relationship. Amen. You don't need a path to get to God, you need God. You need Jesus. You know, that's what we need in all we do. Jesus said to those Jews who believed Him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. You know, some would look at that and say, well, he's talking about if you're a true believer, you'll be in the Word now. He was already talking to believers. And he told those who were believers, if you want to be disciples, my students, then you need to stay in the Word. The man of God needs to be in the Word of God. The woman of God needs to be in the Word of God. It is the Word of God that, can, that, that, he, that makes us his disciples. And then he has this statement, and it's the, most great, it's the greatest one of all in this statement. He says, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen. Don't think that that indeed doesn't put a little more clout to it. Amen. You shall be free indeed if the Son makes you free. What an amazing truth that we have. You know, the essence of so many theologies and so many teachings is uh, the essence of Lordship. If you're really saved, you'll do this, this, and this. Arminianism, well, you might be saved, but you could lose it. Calvinism, you need to prove yourself. You know, you, you, boy, you better prove you're the elector. You're the toast. But the fact is that it's all about grace. And it's all about Him. And it's all about trusting in Him. The Lordship message is a message of doubt. And it's being preached in pulpits all across America every single Sunday. If you was a real Christian, you'd do better. If you, if you, if you boy, all what you need to do is do better and try harder. <coughs> You ain't nothing but diddly squat. That's what you are. That's exactly what you are. And you need to try harder to do better. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll make an inroad somewhere. The fact is, is, yeah, I'm nothing but diddly squat. My God is everything. Amen. My Jesus is everything. And he's got me. Uh, you know, the one Lord Chip Pastor said, I ask myself every morning if I'm saved. I don't ever ask myself if I'm saved. He said if I put my faith and trust in Him, that I would have eternal life. Amen. If you hear my message and believe Him who sent me, you have eternal life. You will never ever be condemned for your sins. You've already passed from death into life. I don't wake up in the morning and ask about my gender. I don't ask about my race. And I don't ask about my relationship with God. I know that I'm saved. I know that I'm a believer. John Piper told 20,000 students at a passion conference. One of my best friends was there. 
If there are any of you saved, then I highly doubt that. That's what he told a group of 20,000 college students that gathered all up from all around the country to go worship God in the Georgia Dome. Uh, you know, the whole thing about legalism, the whole thing about the rules, and here, here's the deal, man. You, you think about uh, those of you that have kids, especially those of you that have grown kids. You know, you want your kids to hang out with you. This is this family. They, they proud back here because they've got their kids with them tonight. Well, they're proud of that. It's awesome. You know, uh, I got two sons. And I, I don't ever drive them out if they're not coming, coming around. You know? They come around pretty regularly. They come around pretty often. But if they just came around because I was driving about it, who needs that? You know? Are you? You know, if you don't want to hang out with me, that's okay. You know? But, you know, I, I don't have to beg nobody to hang out with you, y'all. You, you know? I'm going to tell you right now, I hang out with Jesus because he's an awesome guy to hang out with. I, you know, I read my Bible because I love the Bible. I pray because, because I want to talk to him and to hang out with him. I'm going to be honest with you. I come to church because I love to preach and I love you. That's it. It's not about nothing else. I like God's people. I like y'all especially. Especially when you roll my car and whatnot. I'll tell you right now. This is not a have to. Church ought to be a get to, not a got to, doggone it. We shouldn't have to have it in our mind and hearts that, you know, that, wow, this is a rule, check off a list, put a star on my chart. This is about, I want to be here, and I want to pray, and I want to be with God. Uh, I, I don't need the rules to, to help me along with that. I serve Him out of a grateful heart. I serve Him because I'm free. And it is without the best way to live. It is without a doubt the best way to live in life. Number two, the cost of freedom is always high. Does anybody know I'm telling the truth there? Yeah, the cost of freedom is always, yeah. always, always high. That's why some of us will never, ever, ever be able to accept people disgracing our national anthem. We'll never be able to accept that. We'll never. I mean, I'm not going to cut nobody or shoot nobody over it, but, but I'm, I'm not going to be happy with the guy that's standing somewhere close that don't want to stand up for the anthem. I'm just not going to be I'm just not going to be happy with that. They put a casket, they put a flag on my dad's grave, and it's in my office. And I'm going to tell you what, that folded flag means something. Baby. Yeah. You know, people who come around and they don't want to respect our flag, don't want to respect our country, it's crazy. And it's so discouraging to see uh, with our very eyes things we never thought we'd see. We're, we're seeing our freedoms roll back. We're seeing the absolute Amen. the amendments to the Constitution of the, of the United States. Seeing them roll back, drag away. It's the truth, man. They've been trying to get rid of the Second Amendment for years. Maybe, you know, that, why would you have the right? It's crazy, too. Because they want to act like, well, the only thing the founders had in mind was a squirrel gun. They are full of demons. <coughs> They're crazy. The founders said, not only do you have a right to pack a gun, to form a militia. Who gets a militia to go squirrel hunting? <laughs> you get a militia to protect your wife, your kids, and your grandbabies. That's what you get a militia for. Right. If we start any militias in Rapids Parish, I'm with the cowboys, and especially the gunslingers. <laughs> Isn't it about time to get rid of the Second Amendment? And I'm like, don't we understand that once you decide that these, these life-giving amendments, that these freedoms that we've cherished for way over 200 years, once you start deciding some of them are not fit, what's going to happen to the rest of them? And we don't have to ask that question. We already know the answer to that question. When COVID came along, the government decided that we either had a right or didn't have a right to worship. God help us. <clears throat> there will be 25 feet of snow on Dumbbell Edwards' mansion the next time he tells me I can't be a church. Amen. He just flat out count on that. Good grief. Bobby Boucher is back. Mama, <laughs> let's see it. Mm. My goodness. Well, the whole thing is, is that it is always a great price paid for freedom. And no freedom came at a great
greater cost than your spiritual freedom that you have in Jesus. It cost God His Son, and it cost Jesus His life. The reason we can be liberated and exonerated and set free is because Jesus took our price, took our sin, and died for us on the cross. You know, they want to talk about cheap grace. There's no such thing as cheap grace. No. Hey, there's, there's free grace. Grace is free. If you had to pay for it, you couldn't afford it. Amen. I just want to tell you. It's free. If you don't think there's a difference between free and cheap, just see if you put something out at the edge of your road that says free and see if you put something that says cheap and see who, which one leads from it. Okay? <laughs> just tell you right now, uh, His grace comes to us. It cost Him everything. It cost Him everything that we might have eternal life. But we can't pay a thing for it except to trust and to believe in Him. The third thing I want to say to you is don't ever go back to bondage. Don't ever go back to bondage. You know, Amen. once in a while I preach and I think, boy, if, there's just, if, if there was just a way that I could time out and say, hey, y'all need to remember this. You know, I don't be around forever. None of us are. You know, and if there's just a message or two that I want to live beyond me, one of them is this. Don't ever go back to bondage. Christ has set you free. You are free indeed. Nobody has the right to hit you up. Nobody has the right to say, you've got to believe it like me. Nobody has the right to say, you've got to go through me to get to God. You go to Jesus Christ. He's your mediator. You don't need the pastor. You need the master. Amen. Pastors come and go. Pastors are goobers. It says on the front of my car. <laughs> Y'all need Jesus. That's, I don't want to preach that every, every Monday night. We need Jesus. Uh, it, it don't go back to bondage. Paul told the Galatians, stand fast in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled with the yoke of bondage. Don't let them tie you up once you've been set free. What was going on in the Galatian world? Well, Paul had shared the gospel with these Gentiles. They were getting saved left and right. And Judaizers came through and told, well, you've got to become Jewish before you can become Christian. You've got to obey our rules and our laws and our dietary laws, our circumcision laws. You've got to go through all of these things. But God never gave the law to the church. In chapter 3, verse 1, Paul says, some translations say, Oh, you stupid Galatians, what's wrong with you people? You know, quit going back to bondage. You remember when the children of Israel got out there in the wilderness and they started all their wine? Remember that? Mm -hmm. And you remember, I, 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 I hope I teach you something here. Uh, you remember that, what they would say? What, what would they say they wanted to do? Go back. I want to ask you a question tonight. Do you think he took one of them? Do you remember what happened when they left? Do you really? The firstborn of every house died. Every house in Egypt has a grave in the backyard because of the Israelites. And these idiots are saying, let's go back there. They don't love us back there. Their whole damn gun army is at the bottom of the sea. Oh yeah, they're going to throw a parade for us when we get back there. That's the dumbest thing that any group of people that's the dumbest group of people since Congress of the United States of America <laughs> under Nancy Pelosi. That's unbelievable, man. And anyway, you know, take us back to Egypt. Here's the whole deal. Don't take me back to Egypt. You know, I, I was a pastor for years and years, and, and then it just, you know, I, I, I would never, ever, ever, ever quit preaching. I would never, ever quit hey. sharing the gospel. Just know it. But I got tired a little bit of that church business. I got, I got a little bit tired of some of that... Mm, no, I don't know what to call it. And uh, see, I got, I got a little tired of that, so I kind of just took my marbles and went home to play something else. And, and I just started the church and said, let's see how this rolls. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we started the church that we're at now. And, and the truth is, is like, it felt like, you know, have you ever seen that dog that gets tied up? That old, that old big dog that gets tied up? And, and then when he gets tied up, he's on a short rope there, and he's... Always unhappy and always barking. He gets plumb mean and vicious. You ever seen that dog? That kind of that's kind of dog I was right there. 
They let me go, man. The Lord set me free, got me off that leash, got me untied from that tree. Boy, I started running around getting happy and being excited about stuff. I'm telling you right now, I want you to hear me, and I want you to hear me well. There ain't nobody going to ever tie me up to a tree again. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> ain't happening. It ain't happening. And I hope to goodness, I hope to goodness that every last one of you makes a commitment to have the freedom that God has given you and to never go back to bondage, to never feel like you're enslaved or in shackle because you're not. He whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Number four, His mission should be our mission. I'm going to give you a half a second to say it. His mission should be our mission. Amen. Amen, Amen right? His mission should be our mission. Specifically, if He was in the business of setting people free, so should we. If, if He was in the business of mending the brokenhearted, we need to be in the brokenhearted business. And if he was in the business of preaching to people who didn't get to hear the gospel, then we need to preach the gospel to people who are not getting it now. I think that's one of the reasons I'm so... I think that's the main thing that the two churches I work with have in common. Our church in town is reaching young people. The average age is somewhere around 30. It's a sea of black, blonde, and redhead people. And, you know, it's, it's no, no offense. But anyway, uh, it, you know, it is a, a group of young people and we're wrapped a grace message in a millennial package. And here at Cowboy Church, we're bringing the gospel to a rodeo in Western culture, a group of people in some places, in some ways, being brandished and left out. I think that's why I'm so happy with that. Because we're fulfilling a ministry that Jesus had to preach the gospel to a group of people or to have to share the gospel with a group of people who might unnecessarily be getting it now. He told them, set the captives free. Preach the acceptable year of the Lord. What was that? It was the year of Jubilee. It was the year that things went back to, to being without debt. It was freedom. Jesus is in the business of setting people free. And if we're going to be His people, we're going to have to set people free too. Amen. We're going to have to be in that same business. And then the last thing I want to tell you tonight is even in death, the believer is set free. And this is this beautiful, beautiful illustration about a calf. And, uh, you know, he grows up as a calf out of the stall. And I'm pretty sure what it's just saying, I've seen some pictures, you know, like uh, of different things. And y'all have seen this many, many, many times in real life. Uh, you know, a lot of times when you, and I don't know nothing about, I don't know nothing about calves. Scared to death of <laughs> But I think, and if I'm wrong here, I'm just telling I think that sometimes you have to hem them up to help them. You have to like put them in a stall and give them shots and do stuff to them. And so when they get in the stall, it ain't going to be for them as far as they know. I mean, stuff's happening to them, right? Uh, well, I, the only experience I had is when I was in Oklahoma, I was a little bit younger than you, and uh, that my, my uncle had a bunch of Hereford cows, and they get pink eyes. And the, the way to fix the pink eye was to put salt in their eyes. So they would they would get the they would get the calves and the and the, the and they would put them in a stall. And my uncle was a big bad guy, and he would he would make them cows stand still, and he'd sling salt in their eye. And I always thought, ooh, that's gotta hurt, you know. And, and it'd be so much salt in that cow's eye that that it would just be like snow all over his face. Oh, this ain't a good deal. Can I tell you when they opened the gate? That cow was ready to get out. <laughs> that calf was ready to get out. And so when you get through taking care of it, doing whatever you're doing, you open the door, you let the calf out. That's the picture in Malachi 4. Did you know that? Think about what we're saying here. We go through this life, and boy, we've got some good times, and we want to praise and be happy and be content with the lives that we have. But to be honest with you, one time, so a lot of times we just get kicked around, don't we? You know, you young people, I'm going to tell you what old people are mean. But the reason old people are mean is they've been kicked around their whole life. And when you get there, you'll be mean too, amen? I mean, that's just how it is. I was a nice man. <laughs> now I don't know what happened. Okay? So I can tell you right now, it's just the way it is. And so here you're hemmed up in this old pen. And you know, when he comes for us in this sun, 
He comes with healing in his wings, is what it says, mm -hmm. that he's going to bless us. It's going to be like a calf eating out of a stall. Wow. Free. Free. <clears throat> mm. Yes. Alright, we're going to be free. I'm going to tell you one more thing, then we're going to go. I love this Linda Randall. Y'all know Linda Randall? The God of Mountain, God of Valley. Here's this song, I'm free. So long I had searched for life's meaning. Yeah. Enslaved by the world and my greed. Then the door of the prison was opened by love. For the ransom was paid. I was free. I'm free from the guilt that I carried. Free from the dull, empty life. I'm set free. When I met Jesus, He made me complete. He forgot how foolish I used to be. I'm free from the fear of tomorrow. Listen. I'm free from the guilt of my past. I've traded my shackles for a glorious song. I'm free, praise the Lord, free at last. Mm. <laughs> he says it's free. Amen. When the sun sets you free, yeah. you are free indeed. Hallelujah. Don't let anybody or anything or any emotion or any sin or any addiction put you in shackles. Jesus has set you free. We're going to have a time of invitation. If you